Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Anastasia. I am a social media manager and mentor and I help mompreneurs show up online more confidently using unique branding and intentional engagement. So if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you want more tips on social media as well as help showing up online more confidently. So let's jump right into the video. Today we will be talking about bio optimization. I know when people hear that they're like, first of all, what is bio optimization? How do I do it? How do I get my profile to be the most optimal um, for my business? And that's what I'm going to go through with you today. So today we're going to be talking about Instagram bio optimization and how you can really utilize your profile and tweak some things to get more reach, to get more eyes on your profile so that you can start getting more clients, getting more customers, selling more products, whatever your goal is. So we're going to jump right into it. The first component is going to be the username. So the username is your actual Instagram handle. So after the at sign, what is your actual handle? So you guys want to actually have it tied into in some type of way your business um, or your mission or whatever you're selling. Um, for example, if you are selling candles, you want it to be um, fresh scents at Fresh Scents or at um, Perfect Candle or whatever it may be, something tying into your business and into your industry as well. Um, you don't wanna have it as Star Power Girl 1234 or you don't wanna have it as um, Fresh Cupcakes with the number three as the E in the fresh and then the A for the cupcakes is the at sign. You don't want to have any confusing components in there. Just have it straightforward. Just make sure that people are able to read it. It's not too long and it's not jumbled and too short and has all different types of special characters in it. We don't want that. So we want to make sure that when people are searching, if it's fresh cupcakes, we just want to have it as fresh cupcakes or underscore fresh cupcakes because I know sometimes our username is taken um, and I'm gonna jump right into it so if your username is taken more than likely you don't want to go with that username because you don't want people to confuse the two uh, profiles however if you do want to stick with that username I would say try to make it unique in some type of way like underscore fresh or the official fresh cupcakes or something like that um, so that you are unique to that name now this is not for this video, but make sure your name is available business-wise before you start creating um, Instagram or social media <laughs> accounts with this name. Because if it's not available or if somebody else has the rights to that name, it can get you into a lot of trouble. Okay, now that we talked about the username, we're gonna go ahead and go down to the name. So the name is the actual bolded letters within your bio or your profile. So the bold letters is going to be the name of the profile. And for the name, you want to create something that's going to be searchable, right? You don't want to include your name, your actual business name, because more than likely, someone isn't going to be searching your business name, especially if you're a small business owner. Like Nike or Apple or anything like that, of course they can use that because it's a world world-renowned name but for your business since you're starting off you want to create something that's searchable so if you are a candle maker you can put certified or I don't really know about the candle business but you can say certified candles or um, soy candles or um, no wick candles or whatever the case may be um, I know there's different types of candles out there like I said I'm not in the candle business but I'm just trying to give you guys some ideas you want to create that name portion so that it is searchable because whenever people go into the Instagram search engine or the search box they're typing in things when they type in um, candles from home candles or anything like that you can even add that to your name home candles you want your profile to pop up when they're searching um, what they're thinking about. You don't want them to have to 
search your business name if they don't already know your business name, if that makes sense. I hope I'm explaining it in detail for you guys. Um, but if you're a small business, like I say, you're just starting out, you're just starting to get your name out there, more than likely people are not going to um, or a majority of people are not going to search directly by your business name. So you want to make that name part a uh, searchable or a keyword that people are already searching for or are, or are already using. Okay, the next is the profile picture. So the profile picture is so important because that is the first thing someone sees when they're searching your name and your profile pops up. So for me, this is only from my experience, I love to see people on the profile. Of course, as your brand starts getting more established, as your business starts getting more established, you can add your logo there and then that way people know, okay, this is actually logo of the brand. Um, but if you are personally the face of your brand, I would say put your face there so that it's a friendly, inviting, and warm place for people to go into. Um, that's just how I feel like is more approachable because if I see someone that's a small business and they just have their logo up there um, and the logo doesn't explain what it is, then I'm more than, mm, I kind of kind of like peep at it but then don't really peep at it. But if you're the face of your brand and you know you're the face of your brand or your business, go ahead and put your face up there now if you do have a logo and your logo actually says the name like it incorporates the name of your industry or what your niche is or whatever you're doing like candle co that's very vague that's very broad but if it's like candle co and it's a cute little logo go ahead and you can definitely use your logo um but i would definitely say try to um utilize some facial components within your brand because people like to see the behind the scenes and they like to connect with the people behind the brands before they actually buy into your business. All right, now moving on to the actual description of your bio. So the description of your bio, you want to really intrigue your audience and you want to be creative with this. Of course, people say the I help statement like, hey, I help home lovers, homeowners, um, create a calming environment through my soy candles or whatever the case may be. Of course, I help statements are very nice to have in your bio because it, it tells your audience exactly what your company does and exactly what you help them with and how this product or this service can help them where they are in life right now. However, I will say get creative with your I help statement. It doesn't have to start with I help. It can start with um, inspiring or I inspire or um, bringing, positivity, bringing positivity to blah, 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 blah. Or it can start with creatively showing up for blah, 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 blah. It doesn't have to be like a I help blah, 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 blah. Like, you know what I mean? Because a lot of times, for me, when I see just a generic I help statement and there's no creativity behind it and there's no thought behind it, well, it might be some thought behind it, but when I generally see like I help, specifically I help blank through blank, it's very vague to me and I want to, I want you to evoke emotion out of me. And evoking emotion will, you have to be creative with it. You have to be creative and you have to stand out amongst all of those that are within your industry. Be unique, be creative, write down a couple of um, bios or I, I call them taglines and write down a couple in your journal on your iPad and then maybe ask someone that's close to you that you are um, comfortable with sharing your business with and say, hey, what do you think about tag number one, tag number two, and tag number three? Um, and maybe they can give you some feedback because they are essentially in the spot of the consumer. Um, as a business owner, it's really nice to have other people that are outside of our business um, looking in, giving us few tweaks and a few um, criticism, constructive criticism, so that we can make our business better. So within your bio, you want to create a call to action. And then underneath of the call to action, 
there is a spot you can put your website or a link that someone can go to to view more about your products or view more about your services. So a call to action would be apply to work with me or get your buy one get one free candle or sign up for the newsletters today or anything along those lines. You want to create a call to action to tell people specifically what you want them to do. So you will create a call to action within the bio um, where your I help statement is. And then right underneath, the, underneath of that when you're editing your profile, there's a spot you can put a website. So if you have a website, go ahead and link your website there so that people can automatically click to your website and they don't have to go through your comments or go to another social media site to really get into your website. You have your website specifically there that they could click on. If you do not have a website, you can definitely utilize um, Milkshake, Linktree, Beacons. There's so many other um, link and bio type of applications or platforms that you can start building up and really putting your branding on it and leading people to where you want them to go. The next component is definitely highlights. Highlights, highlights, highlights. Because this is kind of like a sneak peek into your business, into your products, into your services. So without people um, scrolling all the way down through your feed, you have a nice little highlight, a nice little um, album, if so called, that you keep all of your components together within one area. So usually what I see is like behind the scenes um, type of highlights. I see testimonials, I see reviews, I see services, I see um, tips and tricks, I see hacks. Um, so you can definitely utilize those highlights so that it separates the components of your business um, all in one place. So if somebody's looking for some testimonials or reviews like, huh, they want me to buy this candle. Let me see what people are saying about this candle. And they can tap through your client reviews or your client testimonials. So highlights are a great way to really separate each component within your business. Um, so definitely utilize your highlights. And I do want to say always keep them up to date. So when people will click on your highlights, we don't want to see 106 weeks ago. We don't want to see 65 weeks ago. We want to see something pretty current. So I personally say keep it to at a two to three month minimum. So it will be like eight to 12 weeks on your reels. Um, anything sooner, of course, is always, always great. But if you have to keep up some older things within your highlights, I would say stick around more so the two month mark than the three month. But between two to three months, um, you can definitely keep your highlights up, up to date that way. And the last component I would say is going to be your feed. So your feed is so important, you guys. So it doesn't have to be strategically mapped out. It doesn't have to be like a checkerboard effect or like the vertical lines. It doesn't have to be anything fancy schmancy, but at least you want to create a cohesive branding within your profile. So utilize two to three of your business colors within your profile as long along with pictures of yourself as well if you can but you want to stay within your branding and you want to create a, co a cohesive brand um, you don't want your page to be all over the place you don't want it to be red and white for like a couple of days and then it goes to green and yellow for a couple of days and then it goes to blue and gray and then it's just all over the place it creates confusion for your audience it creates um really like what are, what is this person trying to do with their profile you want to create strong aesthetics even though aesthetics is not everything aesthetics does attract the eye of your ideal audience it attracts the eye and it pulls them in and it gets them wanting to look at more and more of your content especially if you're giving valuable content so make sure you have a cohesive brand. If you don't know how to create a cohesive brand or you don't know where to start, definitely go to the link in my bio and we can chat and we can come up with something for you and help you within your um, beginning stages of your business because that is very important in your mission, your values, as well as uh, your branding. And branding is just not, you know, colors. It's not just colors and fonts. 
So if you truly need help with your branding, if you truly need help with your brand voice, the look and feel of your business, definitely hit the link in my bio and let's chat. Let's get it together because 2022 is coming up and we want to be ready. We want to be ready and start the year off right, really pushing out our services and our products and our offers to our ideal audience. So if you need help with that, like I said, just click the link in the bio. All right, you guys, that was all for today's video. So if you guys have any questions about bio optimization, definitely leave it in the comment section below. I am really good at responding back to you guys. And I love to see the questions that you guys have. No question is off limits. Like I say on my Instagram, if you're not following me over there, go ahead and follow me over there because I am most active on my Instagram during the day. Um, but like I said, my DMs are always open. My comment section is always open and I'm always responding to you guys. So if you have any questions, let me know. And if you guys really um, want to see a video or see specific details about social media, let me know in the comment section below because I am here to help you guys. I am here to give you guys all the tips and help you guys with strategy and help you guys show up online, show up on social media more confidently because we got this. We got this. And if you guys haven't already, go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well as hitting the notification bell because once you subscribe, it doesn't notify you that I'm going live. So hit the notification bell so that you know every single time I'm posting a video. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Thumbs up if you found it helpful. Leave it in the comment section below which part was helpful. So I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you guys for watching.